Good morning, everyone. My name is Liang Galu. I'm a PhD candidate at Wayne State University, working with Professor Wei Songxi. The title of my presentation today is A Comparison of Communication Mechanisms in Vehicle Edge Computing. Here's the outline of today's presentation. First, I will introduce the motivation and the contributions of this work, followed by the experimental setup and the prototype which we built can support Wi-Fi, LTE, and the DSLC. Then I will introduce the comparisons and the evaluation in terms of latency, power dissipation, and the system utilization. The last part is the future work. Autonomous vehicle has attracted huge attention owing to its fuel efficiency and safety. Here's a prediction from Intel in 2017 about the amount of data that can be generated on an autonomous vehicle. As we can see, if we consider camera, radar, and the LiDAR, etc., to be installed on the vehicle, the amount can achieve 4,000 gigabytes per vehicle per day. How to process such a huge amount of data in real time becomes a big challenge. Vehicle edge computing is proposed to address this challenge by enable the traffic inf infrastructure to process the data for the vehicle. The key of this technology to address the challenge is to enable V2X communication for the data sharing. Several communication mechanisms, including dedicated short-range communications, DSRC, LTE, Wi-Fi, and are used in this scenario. However, a detailed comparison of these communications using real vehicle edge computing applications is missing. Here's the contributions of our work. Uh, to the best of our knowledge, the, no, our work is the first comparison of the communication mechanisms of LTE, Wi-Fi, and the DSRC using real vehicle edge computing applications. We set up a prototype can, which can support these uh, communications and uh, also we implement several messages including ROS-based, socket-based, and pin-based. From the comparison results, we summarize three observations. Here's the experimental setup. For the computational device, we use Intel Fork Reference, which has Xeon E3 processor and also 32 gigabytes of memory. The communication devices we use include a Wi-Fi router for the Wi-Fi links and also USRP B10 board with VRT2450 antennas for the LTE links. And also we use Mocard DSRC RSE and OBE device for the, for the DSRC communication. In order to cover the case like the OBE can, OBU can move, uh, so we use an indoor autonomous robot called Hydro One to do the experiment. Here comes the prototype we built. So first part is for the Wi-Fi connection. The router assigns unique IP address for each side of RSU and OBU. And uh, above, on top of this Wi-Fi connection, we set up several ROS-based process, including the ROS master, talker, listener, to make sure they can communicate with each other using ROS message. The second part is for IoT connection. We use USRP B10, B210 board with SRS LT software stack to set up dedicated LT links between RSU and OBU. Inside RSU, we set up EPC load, which is the core network of LTE, and also EMB load, which is the base station of LTE. In OBU, we set up user entity node, which is used to connect to the base station of the LT connection. On top of the LT connection, we also set up several ROS, ROS process to make sure they can communicate with each other using ROS message. The last part is the DSLC communication. DSLC protocol is proposed to communicate uh, several predefined messages. In order to make sure the RSU and OBU can communicate with each other using DSLC links and uh, can support the ROS message, we set up a TCP server and the client inside each host machine to 
to the transition between the ROS message to the DSRC message. For the comparisons, we set up three messengers, uh, including the SMP-based PIN message and also two robot operating system-based uh, messengers. One of them is called basic safety message. BSM is one of the message supported by the DSRC protocol, and uh, we are implementing it in ROS to make it a ROS message. Also, we uh, implement another ROS message to transmit image. The matrix we choose to evaluate, including end-to-end -end latency, power dissipation, and the system utilization. For end-to-end -end latency, this table shows the average value of this latency. And we can see that LT shows the best performance for BSM and the P message. Both of these two messages are very small, just several bytes. And the Wi-Fi shows the best better performance in terms of transmitting image. For DSRC, uh, we only have the data for the transmitting BSM message because it's very hard to configure uh, DSRC to transmit a customized image or ping message. These two figures shows the CDF of the end-to-end -end latency. And uh, what we found is that for the transmission of DSM, uh, DSRC shows the best performance, while for the LT and the Wi-Fi, they both have a huge variety. So considering the OBU can, is, is moving, we uh, give the Hydro-1 different speed to uh, mire the latency of BSM message for all these three communication mechanisms. And what are, we have found here is for DSRC, the latency is very stable and the different speed. Well, for LT, the performance degradation is huge when the speed of the vehicle increase. So here comes our first observation, which is a communication mechanism which can provide sufficient and stable bandwidth is still missing. The second part is the power dissipation. We consider four cases, including uh, making OBU and RSU as sender and the receiver. And uh, also the collection for the communication with the transmission of these three messengers are covered in this power dissipation comparison. For uh, DSRC, we can look at the blue bar in each figure, which shows that each of them, the power, power dissipation are larger than 50, uh, 50 watt. And for LTE, the connection is for this LTE link uh, are all larger than eight watt. And for the transmission part, uh, all of them are larger than 12 watt. So we get the second observation here is there are long negligible power dissipation for communication connections for LTE and the DSRC. Last part of the comparison is the system utilization. Here we only uh, discuss the overhead of LTE. So for LTE, we need to have a ROS master on the RSU, which consumes 50 uh, megabytes of memory and less than 3% of CPU. And also, we have an EMB node, which is the base station inside the RSU, which consumes almost 1.6 gigabytes of memory and 28% of the CPU. On the other side, inside the OBU, a user entity UE node consumes almost 1.5 gigabytes of memory. If we consider the UE node is a Raspberry Pi 3D Plus, which only have one gigabytes of memory, then the overhead of setting up this UE node consumes 20% of the memory. Therefore, we get the third observation here is the usage of SRS LTE, as well as ROS introduces long negligible system overhead. The last part is the future work. Uh, first, we are planning to move all of our experiments outdoor, which means we are working with Catherine University to do outdoor experiments in the GM Mobility Research Center. Also, we are working with T-Mobile and Verizon to include more communication mechanisms like CV2X and 5G into the comparison. 
last is for the design of R3 currently, we only use CPU based, but we are uh, in the process of using more accelerator based device in the design of this RC. That's all of my presentation today. Thank you.